Man, this is strange. I have three characters. I've met Sid. I have an airship. I'm going to see the king. And all I've fought is goblins. Like, that is, that is my... The king is going to be like, Who are you? And... Show me your resume. And we're going to be like, Well, we killed three goblins. And... Uh... The first enemy we saw that wasn't a goblin killed us, so we're pretty good. A terrible curse has befallen the people of Cas- Another curse? Only the power of a mithril ring may save them, I am told, but Cassus is suffering from the same fate. I must do something, but where will I find a mithril ring? I am the daughter of the blacksmith of Cassus. The king must still have the ring my father made him. We've come to borrow the king's mithril ring to save Kazus. Will you let us through? Uh, they're gonna, they would use it for their own thing. An audience with the king. Yes, I believe I can arrange that. Come, I will be waiting in the throne room. Wait, I don't... Wait, wait, wait. Man. <laughs> this game is throwing me for a loop, man. We're just like three kids, and we're like, hey, there's some ghosts, and they're like, we got ghosts! And you're like, can we see the king? And they're like, yeah. Forget the ghost problem. These little kids need to see the king. I say, let's do it. Why are there battles inside the castle? Hey, why are there giant eyeball plants inside the castle? Do you guys not clean? Man, I am lost. How have I never heard of, of, like, of all the conversations we've ever had about Final Fantasy, no one's ever brought up 3. So I figured 3 was, like, just the most basic. And it, and it makes sense, because the first game is the first game. And then the second game, they went pretty crazy, and everyone kind of hates 2 because it's so out there and different. I mean, some people like it, but, you know, in general, people think that 2 is a bit too ambitious. So I was figuring 3 would like tone it down a lot and go back to kind of like a more simple way of doing things since 2 was so crazy. But no, 3 is like the weirdest one. <laughs> 3 is like the weirdest one in the whole series. How has no one ever brought up like, hey, by the way, 3 is freaking out there. Yeah, like, the battle system is a lot more simple. It went back to, to Final Fantasy 1. But what happened with the, the pacing and the story? What in the world? How has no one ever mentioned, Hey, Final Fantasy 3 is like Final Fantasy on acid? Just so you know. <laughs> And, yeah, I have to imagine that a lot of this is, is the remake, but... I mean... Still... At least in terms of the discussions we've had, this would be the version that you guys would have played. You wouldn't have played the Famicom version, more than likely. So, yeah, I'm surprised we've never had... I've never had anyone be like, By the way, 3 is out of control. Auxiliary weapon, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Appreciate it, my man. By the way, for those of you watching on like YouTube that are interested about the whole Hollow Month thing going on, this is our biggest event of the year for Halloween. Every year we do a thing called Hollow Month. Today's actually the last day of regular Hollow Month, but we might actually extend Hollow Month into next week as well. Um, because we still have some unfinished business. So you might see the Hollow Month thing uh, next week as well. 
Uh, but after that, we'll be back to the normal Phantathon setup. Maybe even two weeks if Hollow Month goes that long. Hollow Year. Yep, tomorrow's Halloween. Yeah, so for this year, we decided to play the entire Doom catalog, all the way from the original Doom to Doom Eternal. But we also had a bunch of, like, cool Doom mods that we threw in, and uh, some of them took longer than I expected, so... For example, the uh, um, Super Mario World Doom mod that we played was insanely long, like, could have been its own game long. So, uh, that took a lot of time. Doom 3 is actually next. We just finished Doom 64, so we're going to be starting Doom 3 next week on Monday. We would have started it today, but instead, we're going to be doing the Mega Man Doom mod today. Because we hit the goal yesterday, or Wednesday. I got arrows? But... What? Okay, so I need a bow, and then I equip this to the second arm. I get it. Yeah, Doom 64 was uh, pretty good. I like Doom 64. There was some... Uh, I would say, like, the biggest thing missing from Doom 64 is the music. The music is just kind of this ambient noise. It doesn't have the... You know. But, uh... The level design in 64 was surprisingly good. There were a lot of really cool, like, gimmick levels that I liked a lot. So it was better than I thought it was going to be. The control was a bit awkward because it was N64 originally, and the music wasn't that great. But other than that, it was better than I thought it would be. I'm so, like, baffled by the story that I'm barely even focusing on the battles. <laughs> I'm just still trying to figure out what the heck's going on, and why we're fighting balloon monsters inside the castle. How's it going, Saber? Yeah, so the original Final Fantasy III was on Famicom, but uh, the first one we got in the Western world was the DS version in 2006. So unfortunately, this is the earliest version we can play um, for Phantathon. So it's a bit weird, because it, it feels more modern than it should. Maybe those were the guards and we just, like, killed them? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe we're just murdering the guards. They all turned into balloons. White Slayer, but it's a trap! Hate to see that. Oh god, is that a griffin? It's kind of a small griffin. Griffon! It's a trap. Oh my god. Refia just did the mega damage. Is he weak against daggers or something? Because... My double longsword did like no damage, but the, the daggers are like obliterating him. No! Bro, how much health do you have? Craig! Help me out here. Unbelievable.
I, I, I don't know. I... Like, is it just me that's confused? Because if it is, then I'll I'll shut up and try to pay more attention. But... <laughs> this game is kind of, like, going over my head right now. Why? Like, the story, it just kind of threw me in. And everywhere I go is either a goblin that, I, that does one damage or a griffin that kills my whole party. And, and cardboard cutout ghosts. Mr. Game and Watch ghosts. Yo, Walt Lee, thank you so much for the brand new year sub. My name is Craig. Welcome back, Craig. No, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to jump to conclusions here. I'm not saying the game's good or bad. I'm just reacting to what's going on. But I'm like really lost here. I guess my, my question is, this game was made in 2006. Okay, I expect a bit of like jank with Final Fantasy 1 and 2 because they're old, but this game was made in 2006 and you're telling me that the original wasn't like this, like the beginning, right? So they took the original that was made in 1990, I believe. And in 2006, they thought, what would make this work better for an, a, for today's audience? And they added a beginning that's like acid, mind screw, Craig beasts everywhere. Like I'm, I'm just lost. Like what? Why did they think that this would make it more? approachable when I play an old game and it has some kind of like really crazy start that's way too hard or way too ambitious I usually just think well that's the way old games were like they didn't have a lot of space on the on the on the cartridge and so they needed to start off with a bang and they needed to get people interested right away or they needed to make the game hard because the game wasn't that long or like there's all these different reasons but like why in 2006 on the DS did they decide, like, to make this crazy start? It's just kind of weird. Like, what happened to, like, the start of Final Fantasy VII? Where it's, like, a really nice linear dungeon that teaches you everything you need to know. And the story starts off in, like, a basic way that makes sense. You're just trying to blow up the reactor, like... It's not like Square doesn't make good prologues because they make amazing prologues for most games that they but it seems like some of the early Final Fantasies they were just like I don't know. <laughs> it's just weird. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking too hard about this, but I I guess the prologue just really is bizarre to me. The Jin's curse has befallen us all, and I am no exception. Sire, these younglings have come seeking the Mithril Ring to counter the curse. The Mithril Ring, you seek to use its powers to banish the Jinn once again. I would grant you this boon. However, my daughter holds the ring, and she went missing shortly after before the curse was cast upon us. Why is everyone's daughter missing? First the blacksmith, now the king. If the princess holds the ring, the Jinn may have taken her. If it is so, I fear for my precious Sarah. The Jinn must have taken her to its cave to the north. Don't worry, sir. We'll get her back. Sire, I would like to ask you 
for your leave to accompany these brave souls to the sealed cave and rescue Lady Sarah. A loyal soldier of King Sassoon's army, he narrowly escaped the Jinn's curse. His prime concern is finding the missing Princess Sarah. Yet yeah, my leave, Ingus, unless there are any objections. Of course not. His sword is worth twice that of these two. What? Now that's not fair, but I agree that having one of the king's men would help us out a lot. I can't wait till he has the same stats as everyone else. <laughs> There's a secret passageway in the sealed cave. Search for the skeleton. Key. What? <laughs> what? Why the pause? Was he trying to, like, scare us? Search for the skeleton! Key. <laughs> I am counting on you and your friends, Ingus. Banish the Jin and save us all. We're not friends. We met a second ago. Oh, oh, sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. He has one more stat in every Strength, Agility, Vitality, Intellect, Mind. He has one extra. Still a freelancer, though. He's also one level higher. Looks like he has better equipment, though. Nope, he has a knife. Excellent. Alright. That's royalty for you. <laughs> the king is William Shatner confirmed. You need the skeleton key. His sword is worth two characters, carries a knife. Yeah, really. He doesn't even have a sword. It's almost like this entire continent is just the tutorial. Because it's kind of like... It's just kind of its own thing. Like, there's the two towns and the castle and then the cave. And that's like the whole continent. So, maybe that's what they did. They just made this little, like, continent that was like, this is video games. And then injected it with some speed. And here we are. Do I? Wait, I should have rested or something. I don't think I have my cure back. How's it going, Shinra? Am I fighting... Cursed Copper? Okay. Oh, I did get my heals back. Wait. Oh, okay. I thought Ingus was in the back row, but it's just because they walk up when you when it's their turn. I'm doing great. My brain hurts, but I'm doing great. I'm fighting money. I'm dead. Wait. Am I getting cragged? This is where I'm supposed to go! They better give me a lot of experience to catch me up here. How's it going, Python? Uh, I can't really tell you yet, because I've only played an hour, but... Uh, so far, the music's good and my brain hurts. That's... That's basically all I got so far. <laughs> that's my that's my synopsis of the game. I mean Wow, that's look at this picture. <laughs> They're not even helping her up or anything, like, are you okay? They're just kind of like, we did it, and then she's just dead. 
on the ground. <laughs> That's incredible. They're like all happy. I went up a level. She's just dead. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I'd be okay. Like, oh, God. I'm okay if this game is more grindy because at least it has a regular... Oh my god, there's a bony. Uh, it has a regular leveling up system, so grinding in this game is going to feel so much better than grinding in 2. But... Yeah, it's kind of looking like... Uh, looking like my first real dungeon, the game is already letting me know, hey, this game doesn't screw around, so don't screw around. Dang, dude. This is just such a... such a difference from... standard Final Fantasies, like... Like, even Final Fantasy 2 started off pretty easy, it's just if you went the wrong way, the game was like, hey, this isn't where you're supposed to be, you're dead. But here, it's like, even the way you're supposed to go, the game just says, uh, good luck. Which is just so strange to me, because like I said, this is the only one that was made post-2000 until we get to Final Fantasy X. So you'd think they would know, or you'd think that, because the general idea is like, games got easier as they got, as they went, you know? Sure, some games are still hard, but games tend to be more beginner friendly nowadays that's the the whole meme is like get days now or games nowadays hold your hand a bunch right and so if you look at something like final fantasy 1 versus final fantasy 10 yeah final fantasy 10 holds your hand a bit more and lets you know where to go and is a bit easier off the bat but then here comes final fantasy 3 in 2006 on the three on the ds like, hey, is this the first dungeon? You're dead. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That's just so weird to me. I couldn't imagine picking this up as a kid in 2006 after playing something like Pokemon. Like, just getting off the back of Pokemon Silver and then picking this up and having the game just annihilate me in two seconds. weird. I'm glad I'm playing this now and not when I was a kid. I probably would hate it. Maybe not hate it, but I'd certainly have a different experience. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they remade the original and then they realized it was too short for today's standards, so they just introduced this intro that's really hard and made the game more grindy. That makes sense to me, I guess. Like, they took the time to take the original game and make it all 3D and everything, but then they were like, well, crap, this game was made in 1990, so it's really short. So then they added it. They added more grindy aspects. So I don't really mind it. I, I think grinding in a game where at least the leveling is normal is is fine. I'm just kind of I just think it's really bizarre. It was that, this is the last thing I expected. You know when I, when I set up when I set up Phantathon, I knew that this one was going to be an outlier. You know, the first game we're playing the original. The second game we're playing a remake that was made a bit later. And then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we're pretty much playing all the originals. Five, we're playing the PS version. 
but at least five was a bit closer to the PlayStation. Um, and, you know, the rest of them were playing the originals. This one is a remake, 2006 remake. So I'm like, okay, it's a 2006 remake. It's going to be really different. It's going to be like 2006 era where every game was holding your hand and it's going to be a lot easier and they're going to like give a lot of quality of life and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a, 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 a step up from Final Fantasy 2, which kind of like throws you in, right? That's just kind of what I thought. Yeah, I was just thinking like... And then we're going to get to Final Fantasy 4 and we're going to be back to like the game not holding our hand and being maybe rougher. So 3 is going to be like a break from the craziness of 1, 2, and 4. But I was dead wrong. <laughs> Absolutely dead wrong. This game takes 1, 2, and 4 and they're like, Ha! We can do better. What sucks is I like I don't I keep getting goblins. I'm not really gonna get much experience off of goblins, am I? One experience, yeah. I got a job level increase at least, but I'm freelancing, so what does that even mean? I have some gill, maybe I should buy some better armor. Can I buy Well no, because everyone's ghosts, so all I can do is buy from the original town. I still can't believe I have an airship already. What the? Look at... Okay, they're... I'm not gonna lie, they're kinda cute. Just kinda... <laughs> Just kind of chill in there. Final Fantasy Chibi Edition. Uh, can are there any like equipping? No, I don't think so. I could just buy... Do I want shields? What's up, shipper? Okay, we got everyone, everyone decked out now with armor. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I, like, I don't think hard is the right word. Like, that hard is not the word I'm looking for. It, I don't, I don't want to call the game hard yet. It's just that the way it throws you in and expects you to like know that if you walk if you go into that dungeon without first fighting stuff you're gonna get smashed or if you go in that dungeon before buying stuff you're gonna get smashed and then comparing that to like other RPGs that were made in 2006 or before that, like Final Fantasy VII, where you can pretty much get through the entirety of Midgar without purchasing a single thing fairly easily, or grinding at all. It's just very different. It's like they immediately expect you to know, to, to kind of do the general RPG thing of like grinding and purchasing stuff. And then that compounded with the story where the story is just like boom here we go <laughs> saving the world 
Should I buy a bow, you think? I didn't get those arrows this time. I don't know what the purpose of giving people different weapons are because they're all the same. They're all freelancers. And... Like, I don't know. They, they all have the same stats. So I don't know what... No one's really anything different yet. I could try... Doing like... I could try doing like a bow. Giving it to Lufia, I guess. Lufia? Where did I get that name from? Refia. gives her 16 attack. <laughs> yeah. I have to buy a bow and give it to the girl. It's the YouTube way. If I don't do that, I'm doing it wrong. That makes me really want to give the bow to, like, Ingus. Just to make people mad. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I mean, he came, he came with a knife, okay? So, it's not like he's a swordsman. They said he is, but he came with a knife. So, I give him anything, it's better than a knife. Refia can be my tank. If that's actually how it works, like if I can make anyone anything, I'll probably do that. But I don't know yet. I don't know if like, after this they get jobs or something. I don't know. I don't know how any of this works. Right now, they're all just literally carbon copies of each other. So I could give anyone anything and it would be the same. Alright, let's get Craig. You know, what What a story. A kid falls in a hole, and a crystal tells him he is destined to save the world. Then, his adoptive father tells him that he was destined to save the world. So he grabs his kid friend, goes to another town full of ghosts, meets the blacksmith's daughter, takes her to a castle, Realizes that everyone else's ghosts there too Takes one of the king's knights and all four of them go to a cave To find a ring to save everyone from being ghosts and then they all die to money Like <laughs> All four of them are like, we're gonna do it, we're gonna save everyone. And then they walk in the cave and some coins hit them and they die. And then that's the whole... <laughs> and then the king is like, maybe we shouldn't have sent a 12 year old, a 10 year old, a 13 year old, and one of our knights to go save us all. Maybe we should have thought this through a bit more. I should have gone to the magic store. Maybe I could get some magic. Maybe that's... Because, like, especially these coins take, like, no damage from the swords. Alright, the armor is definitely helping. I don't- we're not gonna be able to sustain very long, I only have three cures, but... I love how they all just stand around while we get the experience. 52 experience, that's quite a bit. That's why everyone went up a level.
Let's get out of here. Yeah, the bow's not doing bad. I think the bow is a good choice. I kind of like, um... I know I just spent the first hour complaining about it, but it's more of just how bizarre it is. Not that it's necessarily a bad thing. I should buy some potions. Uh, no, wait, let me see what the magic is first. Um, but I do kind of like the idea of making a Final Fantasy game where you really do have to actually do the whole RPG thing, you know? Because, uh... Oh, here we go. Freelancers can use low-level magic, but their base attributes are pretty low. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Let me give you a quick overview. You suck. The end. <laughs> Thanks, old guy. Um, but oh, I do like the idea of having to do some grinding. It's definitely a step up from, like... Final Fantasy 7 where you really have to do nothing at all to get through the game. I, I prefer actually being challenged. It's just very sudden and was not what I was expecting at all. Now that now that I'm expecting it and I'm, you know, now that I've been uh, forewarned, I'm actually uh, oh, look at this. I'm, I'm having fun going in and out of this cave and getting stronger. Great. I can get poison. Uh. That... That sucks. Alright, I'm just gonna max out on potions. Might actually be able to sustain through this dungeon. My body is ready. <laughs> yeah, let me check. I I don't think there was a. I don't think there was two different shops. Maybe there was. No. Oh yes, I forgot. We just let goblins roam our town. <laughs> I, don't, I don't... Yeah. We haven't really explained this yet, have we? Why are there fights in the town? I don't think I've ever played an RPG where there's fights in the towns. I can't think of a single one. You are never safe. Again, though, that just adds to, like, the bizarreness. Where they just really did not want to screw around in this game. Like, nope, there's no safety. Even in the most brutal games I've ever played, there's always a safe place, you know? The most brutal of RPGs still have, like, a town with an inn that you can just, like, safely sit in and heal. This game, nope. You gotta battle your way to the inn. Then the inn comes to life. It's like a, a haunted house, and then the... The pillow is rough, and the sheets are on fire. <laughs> the game doesn't screw around. I'm surprised my potions didn't get ste like stolen overnight. We got mummies. I'm glad we're getting all the stereotypical Halloween enemies out of the way immediately. We got ghosts, we got mummies, we got skeletons, we got goblins. The game over screen just comes up. 
you go to sleep and the game's just like, you never woke up. Game over. <laughs> You were eaten by a Gru. Game over. God, these things poison me and confuse me? Is that confusion? Or is it... Maybe it's paralysis. Nope, it's confusion. First dungeon of the game. Enemies are already doing several ailments. Every time you save in this game, there's a 10% chance you die of dysentery. <laughs> I still love them standing there with their team party members dead. Okay, well I can't heal now, so that's cool. Get me out. Ow. Thank God I actually made it out. You expected us to ease you into this? This is the first Final Fantasy game on DS. There is no easing. It's not even like... I mean, Final Fantasy 3 is technically a sequel, but it's a Final Fantasy game, so they're all different. You're supposed to be able to just pick this up and play. It's not even like this is... You know... Chrono Trigger 2, I don't know. Where... Where am I going? I'm just gonna die from poison, slowly. <laughs> Yo, how's it going, Kurt? Thanks for the good luck, I need it. <laughs> I very desperately need it. Just sleep it off. Sleep off the poison, it's fine. Have you seen my party members? They've gone missing. I slept like a log. A dead log. Oh no, resting doesn't revive. Excellent. Been looking forward to this playthrough since I butchered mine back in high school. Dude, you're in luck! You get to watch me butcher it now. <laughs> the whole the whole point of Phanathon is for people to relive their memories of games, so honestly that, that means a lot. And I hope that I play this just as bad as you did when you were a kid. That would be that's my goal. My goal is to play it just as bad as you played it so that you get the maximum nostalgia. That's great. Okay, there's two fountains. Okay, this one revives and this one heals. Okay, so I'm sorry. I, I'm going on so many tangents today. I apologize. I'm sorry. But can we talk for a second about game design? I'm someone who doesn't like my handheld. Yes, this game is like on speed acid. But what? now that I'm used to it, I'm fine with it. Okay? Now that I understand that the game is speed acid, I'm... I'm uh, approaching it as if it's speed acid, okay? But this is something that bothers me. If you're gonna have two fountains that look the same, but one does HP and MP and one revives, and there's nothing in the game telling you how to revive, like there was no tutorial to say, like, this is how you revive, hey, I gotta go to churches to revive or whatever, then at least have this guy say, like, hey, the left one heals your HP and MP, and the right one does a revive. Instead of saying, you must not forget what Elder Tapapa has told you, which means nothing. 
Like, if you're going to have this NPC here, you might as well have him tell you what the things do instead of just saying nothing at all. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's... Maybe that's dumb. Maybe, maybe past me would have said, but you should just go up to the fountains and see what they do. You should be adventurous. Maybe. I don't know. I guess if we're going the adventurous route, where the game's just going to tell you nothing and you need to explore everything for yourself, then fine. Don't tell me what they do. What if Elder... I don't think he did. Maybe. Maybe he had, Maybe he's like the tutorial. We should go talk to him. Maybe he's like, hey, the game's going to kick your butt. Be sure to use these fountains. Also... We're in the wrong spots. I, seriously! <laughs> if you had asked me before I played this game if any NPC should tell you anything, I would have been like, no. NPC shouldn't tell you things. Let, let me explore. Let me see for myself what things do. Don't just have NPCs tell me things. Unless it's like how to get through the game, like, you know, where I'm supposed to go next or something. You know, dropping a hint as to where I'm supposed to go next. That's fine. But telling me basic things about the game? No. Let me figure it out for myself. But this game is cranked up to 11 so hard that I actually want backseating NPCs. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe this game is questioning, like making me question all my choices about video games. All of my, all of my game design preferences are being brought into question after playing this for an hour after one hour it's already broken me I need to fight things that aren't goblins yeah I don't know it's weird I I, I don't know what I want like I said now that I understand that if you're entering a new area you better kill one thing and leave. Now I'm on the same page. Wow. Ingus just got... I was gonna say Ingus got the dingus, and then I was like, does that make sense? I don't know. It sounds funny, so I'll say it. He got the dingus. You hate to see that. Okay. Well. I feel as if maybe this is just the most realistic Final Fantasy game, you know? Like, if I... Yo, oh, Zuloff, think of the 41 months! I think that I think that this game was just going for a more realistic sense. If four kids walk into a cave and a skeleton walks up with a sword, like yeah, he's probably just going to murder him. You know? Also, what's the point of the inn if the church gives me revive and healing for free? I'm not sure why the inn is there. Well, it's free! <laughs> That's the weird thing, it's free. You must make your way to Kazis. Go swiftly, but go prepared. So he does- that is, that is the game warning me, see? I should have listened to him. Go prepared, he meant it. 
This isn't like your your standard RPG where the NPCs just say go prepared and then it's easy. No, he really meant it. Go prepared. You should have said like go prepared and if you see a skeleton, run. Must be it's supposed to be Boney's favorite Final Fantasy game. Right off the bat, he's like the strongest enemy. <laughs> 